Welcome back to another Prairie Sense Ranch Farm Vlog. My name's Aaron. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. That's right, there is a heck of a lot of hay to cut yet. It is getting late in the season, the days are getting shorter, and the hay is getting older. I also want to show you the quarter that we fenced off and we rotated our cattle and their calves through last summer to practice the start of practicing regenerative farming. This field was dead and I'm gonna show you it now. That's right, folks. Cattle actually healed our land and made it productive. I gotta show you this, it's pretty awesome. Proof is in the pudding, people. I love pudding. <laughs> Let's bail some hay too, why the hell not, Aaron? Let's pitter, patter, and get at her. Oh! This is the field, this is the quarter, which we fenced off in that drought we had last couple years. And we grazed, we rotated our cattle herd through this field, through this quarter, because number one, the field was done, it was dead. Everything was burnt out, the alfalfa was dying out, the grasses were dying out. It wasn't worth our time to cut. There was probably, you know, six bales, five bales on this entire field. It was just outrageous, it was dead. Now this was ground zero for our regenerative farming test plot. This was the one field I really kept an eye on because I wanted to see if this field could come back. Would the cattle be able to heal our land and put it back in proper order? And I will say I am astonished. If you like these PSR and Hayden videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Hey, when you hit that thumbs up, it tells YouTube, Hey, this guy's video is okay. They throw it, show it to a few more people. So thanks in advance. Let's get back to work. You can see there's a few cow patties. Most of it's broken up. But as you can see, we got some bales off here. There's more bales on that side. And we're going to have a, a ton on the back. The back is thicker than the front. Now, Aaron, it was a growing season. You got lots of rain. Yeah, that's true. It was a growing season. But this was a dead field. This field, I thought we would have to reseed. Now, it came back thick. There's tons of alfalfa, tons of grasses. It's just fantastic feed now. It's unbelievable. The cattle actually came in and they rejuvenated. They added organic matter to the soil and it's absolutely astonishing. It's astonishing how they healed the land. Now, this just goes to show, for those of you that say animals kill the land, the cattle are killing the land. Yeah, they are. If you lock them in the same little area for day after day, month after month, yeah, they're gonna, they're heavy, big animals. It's locking an elephant in a little dog run saying, boy, that elephant sure killed the land. Well, yeah, obviously. But I'm telling you, if you utilize your livestock properly, they can rejuvenate. They can add diversity, organic matter to the soil and make this land live again. And this is exactly what my cattle herd did to this quarter. So this goes to show it's worth my time and effort to fence off some more, start rotationally grazing and, and practice some regenerative farming practices and lean towards that direction. I think it's a no brainer for a lot of areas, especially for areas that are touching our pasture areas. So the key is not to let them overgraze. We left them in this quarter for about three weeks, roughly maybe a little bit more a few days over but they were coming and going kind of and then we locked them out after a month they were locked out locked out we spread a lot of uh <clears throat> seed i noticed there's just a nice spread of seed unbelievable unbelievable i'm really really impressed really happy with it and you know it did help that we got some rains <laughs> this spring etc this summer but definitely has to do with that so hey Cattle are good for the land. If you utilize them properly, if you give them proper tools, they will heal your land. I will tell you that much. I would urge all you farmers out there, you livestock producers, cow producers to try it. You know, <laughs> even if you want to put up some temporary fencing, I'd say it's definitely worth your time. Look at here, the cattle are here. This is the other side of, of that field. The cattle graze this out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I dropped a 10th bale out over there earlier. We had 10 bales off this tiny little piece I cut. 10 bales. Last year, there was nothing here, nothing. We didn't even cut it. It was just pathetic. I could have cut it with my sit down lawnmower. 
wherever the cattle went and grazed and moved through came back like wildfire. They absolutely saved all this dead land. I contribute this to the cattle. It's amazing. Livestock can heal your land. They can add to the organic matter and the, the biodiversity of your soil and just add. They are absolutely a valuable resource. If you have livestock, you got to utilize them. Anyways, we got some more hay to uh, bail up, so let's get out there. This is all the fence. You guys put up two strand barbed wire. Kind of just a temporary fence to keep them in and it worked great. I, uh, you could charge the top wire. You want to make it a hot wire. And that's all you need. You can just put up even a temporary hot wire, but there's a wire. It's nothing crazy. Just a tiny little fence and that's all you need. We've been really trying our best to make as much hay as we can here the last few weeks, but I'll tell you what, Mother Nature has stepped up on us. She is large, she is in charge, and she's been doing this. Well, we made 20 bales before this started. Absolutely pouring. Just out of nowhere. So, we're shut down for the day. What can you do? Here's the hail, it's starting to hail out. Shit. Oi, 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 oi. down wind died down sun's out hail stopped so that's good but that definitely shuts down for a couple days nothing you can do can't beat the weather you know that's just you'll never win that battle that's for sure let me know in the comment box below where are you lo located and when are you typically done haying what month I know it's gonna vary quite a bit some of you are in like if you're like me in Canada, the heat comes on fast and it goes just as quick. Winter comes real quick here. So uh, we have a short season to make hay. But yeah, we're typically done the first, by the first week of September, we're done everything. This year's gonna be a different story. We're not gonna probably be done till mid-September, into September. And that's if we give her and uh, we have some luck with weather. Well, I'm done about uh, just two passes or so, so far, it's pretty thick stuff. But the mower's uh, running good. Sounds nice and quiet now. Yeah, we're gonna hammer this little field down and then we're gonna go in behind that bluff. There's a nice alfalfa field. We couldn't make it here, but it dried up enough that I can uh, now make it here without making too big of ruts. So yeah, we're gonna do our best to hammer down as much as we can right now. Days are getting short. It is time to finish up. So yeah, we're just gonna give her, I guess, till we can't anymore. And uh, what can you do? Well, mower seems to be working good, but I just hit a tree that I couldn't see because it's so much bloody growth. This is crazy. Look how high this is. Well, the thick side of the field is really th thick and heavy, and then the thin side is actually filled in. It's not as high, but it's 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 thick, you know? There's lots of growth, so we're gonna keep on hammering away at this little chunk. Once we're done this one, we're gonna move on to that one. We're gonna finish this little opening, uh, and then we'll, uh, well, we already got that chunk done, so little by little, chip away at it, I guess. I would've come to this field about a month ago, but we couldn't get in here until now. Uh, there was just too much water everywhere. 
So the field itself is high, but I'm saying to get here, uh, to access it, even on the way back, I got to cut a little path, but I don't know if I can, because there's a little bit of water, but I might just bring the mower up and cut a little couple strips there so we can get in and out, so maybe it'll dry up there. But, but yeah, I know it's going pretty good. The mower seems to be running okay. So that's good. But uh, yeah, there's probably, I don't know, I'd probably cut, well, down near 80, 100 bales maybe today already. So maybe by the time I'm done, hopefully I have 130, 140 down. So that'd be okay. We got some hay drying right now as we speak. I'm probably gonna have to run out there after I've done these chunks. I'm gonna go bale it up before nightfall. There's probably another 50, 60 bales in the other field uh, that we have down already. But, uh, but yeah, there's no choice. He's got to cut these chunks and just keep on giving her till we can't anymore. Uh, hay actually looks still nice and green. It doesn't look too tough yet. Uh, everything was just a late season. Luckily, it was a late, late growing season. So, uh, you know, on a typical year or a normal year, this would be pretty mature already, wiry, a little coarse, but uh, seems to be holding in not too bad. So, well, I had to gear down a little bit. <laughs> it's a uh, pretty heavy stuff going on here but uh, it's going pretty good looks like this whole chunk can be cut so that's good it dried out not bad this is my test test run there I just wanted to make sure it's not wet across here so there's like a little dip but uh, yeah it should be lots of hay out here I hope that we can get this off nice and dry because uh, there's some nice alfalfa in the middle uh, nice grasses on the other side this is the lower areas obviously you can tell by the high grass um, but uh, a little moss here in the dip but the rest of it, the field itself isn't a very old field it's only uh, this field was uh, redone I think it was like three four years ago so it's quite healthy and vibrant this year that's for sure well why the hell not let's go jump in the baler let's get to work let's do some bailing look at this it's clouding up it's bunching up looks like it's raining north of us a little ways been happening all year every time I come out with the baler it's crazy holy I guess we better give her this year we literally had three good spells of weather and in between there it's basically rained every couple days so it's been a real challenge to make hay definitely not gonna hit our uh, goals this year but we'll make enough for ourselves um, you know we're almost there already but uh yeah different kind of battle the haze there it's just a matter of getting to it and uh you know you can't drop it on <laughs> when there's a half inch of water so yeah next year depending what the weather's like it's gonna be a different hang season next year i'm sure different than the year before that and this year well i cut the front of this little area there's some nice tree foil some grasses I cut where I could so I'm gonna hammer off this little piece by then maybe that back piece will be ready to bail so let's get to work Finish this little field, this little chunk, it's not a field, and we're heading to the back. Well, we're down to the next piece here. Looks like the hay's pretty heavy here. Looks like some good quality stuff. So dad's actually behind me with the rake, but he need me to uh, bail up this uh, inner piece so we can keep on going and uh, raking in circles. So I'm gonna quickly zip this one off and then slowly work my way outward. Well, these windrows are big and beefy today. <laughs> I have to drive away though and uh, drive up on the hill. I don't want to drop in the low spots. Especially out here, as you can see, it can be fairly low. Uh, like right over there is fairly low. This is a high ridge, but uh, definitely don't want to drop it at that low portion. So, should be a few bales here. Oh, I'm almost done this little field. And then we're going to move on back uh, west to one of our other fields dad it headed there to do a couple little patches there 
probably have, I don't know, I have no idea, 15, 20 bales, 25 bales, I have no idea. I'm gonna finish off the last few bales here and uh, I'll give you a bale count. Went pretty good. Uh, my compression fingers I put on, that new compression rod, seems to be holding up and doing the trick. So thankfully we have that old parts, uh, John Deere 530 baler. That's why I've been pulling parts off. Most of the parts are uh, interchangeable with the 566, so that's all right. But uh, I am going to be considering, I'm going to be looking around for upgrading if we don't have any more natural disasters or anything that sets us back. But uh, <clears throat> I do want to upgrade some of my equipment here in the next little while, whether it be disc mower, a baler, or a tractor and a baler. I, I'm not sure, but I want to upgrade something here uh, in the near future. But uh, we'll see, time will tell, I guess, and see what else some other nature has to throw our way, right? <laughs> we just finished our last little chunk there. <clears throat> I just kicked out my last few bales. So we're done for today. Uh, ended off with uh, almost a thousand bales on the clock. So that's not bad. We hit a grand just about, we were a couple away from a thousand bales. So that means we're essentially, we're nearing our goal. Um, I wish we had more on the clock, but that's okay. Our last video I had uh, just uh, a little more, I think I had 610 bales on the clock, something like that. So we, we put on in not quite 400 bales since then in two weeks. So that's not bad. Um, I'm going to have to hammer down. We got another good week of hot, dry weather. I want to put another three, four hundred bales through if I can on, uh, on the old clock and then not worry this year. We'll make enough feed this year. So that's good. I'm happy with it. The old baler is working good. Those, uh, compression fingers I added and changed out the bar really did the trick. Uh, really eats up the windrows now. No jamming up. I didn't plug up a single time. So. Yeah, no, everything's going fairly good with the exception of all the chunks that we left uncut. But you can't help. I, I don't think we're going to hit it this year. I don't. I just don't think we're going to be able to get into these low areas. It is just too wet. You know what? Normally by now it's drying up, but uh, if we get another rain or two, I just can't see us getting in here. These little slough areas, like it's it's wet, wet. Soaking. And in there, there's actual water. Like I couldn't even cross with the baler. So, oh well, I guess next week we're gonna be hammering uh, some some areas. Uh, we're just we're just cutting down the heaviest areas that we can access. So I got a couple more fields left that we gotta take down. We'll be done all our first cut very soon. So, man, what a long dragged on season. But hey, the mother nature's the queen. She's she t dictates when we cut hay and when we make hay. So there's nothing we can do about it. A weird weird year this year that's for sure something different about this year one extreme to the next well it's been a long day this is aaron signing off we will catch you next weekend with an all new prairie sister Rush farm vlog be there or be square my friends we will catch you then have a fantastic weekend and a great week and we'll catch you on the flippy flop bye for now